So what we have here is the Boulevard Short Boulevard. It's 50 by 102 or 4 inches. The Vitola de Galera listed as a Petit Robusto. So the common name is Petit Robusto. Packaging is a numbered semi boit nature box of 20 cigars. There were 3,000 produced. It was a 2017 release, as you can see there. And it was released in 2018. So this here is box number 2331 of 3,000. So it's uh, toward the end of the run of this particular run of cigars. So giving the box a quick twirl, spinning it around. You can see it there. 20 little tiny cigar inside this box. I mean, if you total up all the tobacco together, you get 10 big ones. There's the Vista. And there's all your information there. There's your regional release paper right there. It gives you a little bit of background on the cigars and whatnot and so on and so forth. And once I get that out of the way, there's the nice cedar with the boulevard symbol burned in there. Got a little bit of tissue paper on top of the cigars for protection. And there we go. There's a nice look at the short boulevards. So let's get one of these out of the box. A bit of a problem, but we got it done. And there we go. Let's give this thing a quick twirl. Give it a nice spin around. Got a pretty nice dark wrapper on it. Quite oily. Has some, uh, a little, slight little bit of toothiness in there. And uh, it's very short. <laughs> Four inches long. So, anyway, let's uh, get a little bit closer into the cigar. Okay, so we're back with the Boulevard, short Boulevard, 50 by 4 inches. That's it. That's all you get. Box of 20, too. Couldn't even do 25. 20. So, but I just think this is going to be the trend moving forward. Uh, boxes of 10, I think, are going to become a lot more prevalent easier to roll cigars. I, I would imagine this cigar is a lot easier to roll than say, all right, a Lancero or a, a Panatella, Slim Panatella, uh, Corona Gorda maybe even, or Perfecto. I mean, there's just not much there, four inches by 50. But uh, I think that they're gonna just exploit and utilize as much of the tobacco that they grow in process and put it into whatever they can and not waste. The whole idea is not wasting anything, right? You want to make sure that what gets thrown through the system gets spit out by the system and there's very little left over after it's been processed, right? And so I think that's going to be the trend moving forward. It already is starting. I it, it already has started. That's my opinion. It started a while back, especially with the regionals where they said, you know, they can just do a box of 10 or a box of 20 of these, which is basically a box of 10, right? I mean, considering the size of this cigar, the amount of tobacco, it's basically a box of 10 as far as tobacco goes, like a normal box of 10. Whatever. Anyway, I'm rambling on. That's just my opinion. Just some knucklehead on the internet with an opinion, so... Take it for what it's worth. So here we are, Boulevard Short Boulevard. And uh, gonna use Rod's perfect punch on this thing. Gonna use the smallest one. If you haven't seen the video on this, I suggest go over there and uh, check it out. There's, uh, I go through the process with the blades and I, I originally had an original prototype one that didn't snap together like this now it does so it's a lot of good information on that and it's also about this thing too so these two products are going to be coming up soon but not quite yet all right Some resistance on the draw, but that's okay. We want a little resistance. We don't want it to be a wind tunnel. All right, let's get in there. 
let's get in there with something. It's going to take longer to light the cigar than it is to smoke it. Well, there's a nice little saltiness on the lips right away. And it's a little bit earthy. Yeah. Yeah, whoa, wow, that finish, whoa, that finish is pretty, pretty gosh darn earthy on the palate, wow, that is something else, I didn't need a sip of Coke after that one. A couple sips of Coke, woo. Baby, a little bit punchy in the nose too, starting out. <clears throat> but I mean, it's stuff that I would expect from a tiny little cigar. I mean, I've said this, I don't know how many times I've said this though, that the smaller cigars are like the ones to me that are more punchy and, and just stronger. With bigger cigars, not so much. Yeah, now that I'm prepared for that earthiness. Um, yeah. Wow, that's a nice, strong finish on the palate for that, for this cigar. Now, I have brought this up in the past. There's a bit of a resistance on this draw, too. So I might have to like dig in there with that perfect draw a little bit, open it up a little bit. But when you're smoking a cigar like this, you want to really take your time with it. And you don't want to just be puff, puff, puffing it like crazy because you're going to get this part really hot. And so we become bitter. And you don't want a bitter cigar. You want a flavor. You want the cigar to have flavor. And so just got to take your time with it and relax. Yeah, so it's still got that kind of that, that earthiness. And where it's really presenting itself on the palate is like on the roof of the mouth, right? Not a lot in the tongue, but more in the roof of the mouth. And probably because when the, you know, the smoke hits the roof of the mouth and you get retroed out your nose and so on and so forth. But it's really lingering up there. And, but there's still that, kind of an earthiness on the palate, which it's kind of tamped back a little bit though. It's like, um, it's still there and it's still lingering quite a bit, <clears throat> but yeah, it is still lingering quite a bit. Pretty full, right out the gate. The retro was uh, kind of like a little bit of that earthy retro, bit of pepper though too, a little bit of a blast of um, pepper and a little tiny hint of like a bit of a kind of a fruitiness in there as well. But you got like this kind of an earthy, um, fruity, peppery retro. 
So it's um, quite interesting, quite full right out the gate. Big surprises, little packages. <clears throat> but, oh, wow. Like that one there was really compounded on top of what was left <clears throat> from the last draw. And it's really kind of building up on the palate that kind of earthy, Almost a little bit of a kind of a oily coating a little bit on there on the palette, but very, very distinct and very, very um, strong, <laughs> forthcoming, whatever you want to call it. It's there. I mean, it's letting you know this cigar is like letting me know like, here I am. Take that. How about that? <laughs> really is. It's a little tiny cigar too, like itty bitty, itty bitty. But it's not, it's not uncomfortable. Like I've smoked some cigars, especially some of the Fuente stuff and Padron stuff, that can be very uncomfortable when you smoke it, right? It's just like, yeah, there's a lot there, but it's not something that's satisfying, so to speak, right? It's just like, kind of like too much. And it's, it, to me, I mean, my best descriptor for that is it gets a little uncomfortable smoking it. Whether it's the amount of nicotine in there or the amount of pepper or whatever that's hitting you in the nose and in the mouth and in the face, whatever that is, that it's just not a comfortable amount of whatever the cigar is presenting to you. It's just, it's, it's too much. It's very uncomfortable. This isn't that way. This is, this cigar, it's definitely letting me know it's there. It's it definitely, this cigar is talking to me. And it's leaving behind that really heavy, kind of oily earthiness on the palate. And it, I still, you know, with the retro, it's, it's still there. It, it's lingering quite full on this cigar. But it's not uncomfortable like some of these other cigars that I've had that are just like too much. It's just, it's just right. So you can say that there's a balance there, right? It's balanced. There's a balance there. Even though it's strong, right? And it's, it's doing what it's doing, it's still balanced. That's kind of where I come in with balance. It's still got that saltiness there, a little bit of saltiness on the lips. That's kind of dissipated a little bit. But the, that mouthfeel, though, is still there. It's still there. I wouldn't expect it to go away too much either on this cigar. I would imagine that that mouth, that heavy mouthfeel is going to be there throughout the entire cigar. I think it's going to be there the whole time. But yeah, the, and then the retro kind of that uh, has still has that earthiness in there with a little hint of that fruitiness in there. And the pepper is starting to wane too. 
So it's not so much of the, um, you know, of that pepperiness in the nose. It's that's really tamping back. It's waning, and it's more like that kind of an earthy hint of a fruitiness in there in the retro. Let's translate down out of the palate, and you can, you know, you definitely getting that earthiness on the palate, but fruitiness not so much. That's more in the nose. I mean, I feel half tempted to kind of just, but it's going to take a little bit longer than that. It's going to be awfully boring. So, probably bored you enough right now. Anyway, I'm going to smoke this thing down to the band, and I will be back with the rest of the tasting notes on the Boulevard Short Boulevard. So, before I get into the tasting notes on the cigar, I mentioned earlier in the video that there was a bit of resistance on the draw, so I was going to just kind of figure out how to just get it open a little bit more. A lot of times guys will bite down on the head of the cigar and that kind of opens things up. But I found with the perfect draw, once you start smoking the cigar and the tobacco heats up a bit, <clears throat> it's quite easy to just go in there about, oh, about a quarter to half an inch and poke around the head of the cigar and pull out some bits of tobacco. Because a lot of times it's just the head of the cigar that might be a little bit too packed, a little bit too tight and then you could just pull out those bits of, of tobacco on the head of the cigar and that'll loosen it up enough to where you'll get a, a perfect draw or a good draw on the cigar and that way you're not tunneling all the way through the cigar because I've seen a lot of guys use these things guys and gals and they poke through that just ram it in there like but you don't really need to do that starting out because like I said a lot of times the problem is just here right so just go in a half inch, four or five, six times on the head, see how that opens it up, and then go a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, and a little bit deeper. And then that way, you're really kind of maintaining the integrity of the cigar as well, and you're not like putting a tunnel in there or anything like that, and you're just loosening up the tobacco so that you can smoke the cigar. So that's my take on the perfect draw. As far as it goes for the Boulevard Short Boulevard, um, another thing too is short cigar, so you need to smoke it slow. Don't get it hot so it doesn't get bitter. Now, one, there's a couple things you can do. Just set it down. Another thing what I like to do is I'll blow through the cigar like that and set it down. Another thing is, is that, you know, say I've set the cigar down. It's sat there for a while. Well, t cigars have a tendency to go out. So if you blow through it like that, what it does is the the cherry on the foot will ignite. You get that tobacco going, but you're not drawing that hot air through the cigar. You're blowing it through there so it's not going to heat up on you. So you can blow through it like that. And then you get your smoke. So it's a couple of things that I do, tips, whatever you want to call it, but that way you can smoke your cigar slow, it won't get hot, and you can enjoy your cigar. So back to the tasting notes on the cigar. Definitely a full, full cigar. Had that really heavy earthiness, that oily earthiness on the palate that just maintained throughout the entire cigar. That was definitely predominant. And the pepper dissipated and that fruitiness came up. So there was a really nice balanced, earthy, semi-fruity retro with the really kind of earthy oiliness on the palate. And that pretty much maintained throughout the entire cigar until I got to like midway through the second half of the cigar. And that earthiness was still there but there was a bit of a kind of a cacao, like a bitter cacao that finished on the palate as well that mixed in there with it, which was a little bit off-putting. There was also a bit of an herbiness that came up with that earthiness 
in the retro, which kind of drowned out that fruitiness. That fruitiness really dissipated and waned and became more of a background note as opposed to a forefront note. So the end of the cigar here was more kind of herbaceous and earthy, and it was herby, earthy, and kind of bitter on the palate. So there it is there. Full, full, full strength, full bodied cigar. Have to give it a CA rating right now of around 88. And uh, aging potential moving forward, I think as these cigars age, it'll wick out that bitterness for sure. And it'll become less and less prevalent in there. And the cigar will become even more balanced. So if you have a chance to pick up some of these, I say go for it. If you like a punchy cigar, if you don't really care for like a cigar that's going to really let you know that it's there, you want kind of more complexity and everything like that, I would definitely steer away from this cigar. I wouldn't pick up this cigar, especially for the price on them. They're kind of expensive for a small cigar, so you could probably be better, you would be better off spending your money elsewhere. But uh, if you do pick up some of these cigars, hopefully we will compare notes in the future. Anyway, I've rambled on enough, and that's enough out of me.